Hey guys, this is Katrina with IDA TV here at WonderCon, and I'm here with the creators of Blastosaurus. This is Richard and Paul. Hey guys, what's up? Hi, good to be here. Good to be here. Having fun. Yeah, this is a really cute comic actually because it hits home. I love dinosaurs growing up. So tell us, tell us how you guys got here. Um, I've actually been publishing Blastosaurus for about 12 years now uh, back in New Zealand and it was the highest selling book back there uh, for about a decade and then I moved out here and uh, Golden Apple offered to, they offered to do a reprint of all the original content and I said no that'd be boring then I'd be doing nothing for ages and so I teamed up with Paul and we started rewriting it right from the beginning. Okay and, and what about you Paul? Yeah well we, we met at a, uh, a Comic Con in New Zealand, okay. became fast friends way back when and when he decided to come here and write here, uh, I have a background in uh, animation, doing you know a lot of cartoons and that that sort of thing. So we wanted to do an all ages comic, and um, we are all ages, the two of us together. <laughs> <laughs> the three of us, no? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, but um, so tell us kind of like the inspiration behind it. It's really cute. Who, well. Yeah. I, I grew up on uh, Ninja Turtles, you know, oh, but you know, okay. even as a three-year-old when that show started, I was bothered that the turtles could put on a hat and walk down the street and no one noticed there were turtles anymore. So I wanted to create like the realistic mutant crime fighter. So he's this kind of grumpy old man who wishes he wasn't shaped like a dinosaur. He can't go out in public without everyone mobbing him. He has to get specially made pants. And there are these two like precocious children who just want to be his best friends and have amazing adventures. And because it's Freak Out City and everything there is kind of weird, adventure just keeps coming to him. Mm. Anything can happen in Freak Out City and usually does. We have creatures from other dimensions. We have uh, robots that uh, do really mean things. But Blastosaurus and the two kids working together can take, take down anybody. What was the inspiration behind your creativity? You know, sometimes they always say there's a personal tie between your, your creative art and your characters. Uh, well, I've been cuddling the same Triceratops toy since I was seven. And uh, one uh, afternoon, a friend of mine came in and said, we're going out for breakfast because it's 2 p.m. She pulled off my covers and I was asleep cuddling a, a plastic ray gun and a, and a Triceratops. <laughs> and she said, wow, Richard, you're like the coolest seven-year-old in the whole world and you're no girls allowed fort dinosaur gun. And I said, um, it's Fort Blastosaurus, thank you very much. And then it became a joke in the back of another comic, and then we suddenly realized that it could be a real story on its own. When we met, um, I loved uh, the New Zealand Blastosaurus, uh, but it was it was more graphic novelly as far as I was concerned, and it needed to be a little more fun for twelve-year-olds. And since I'm mentally a twelve-year-old. <laughs> It worked easy for me. It was easy for me to, to find myself in it. Now, one of the characters, Richard, is basically Richard. Who is that? I want to know. Well, no, there's this character named Richard, who I think is based on my friend Richard, who is also me, my best friend. <laughs> um, he is, he is a, an impulsive incredibly clever but at the same time incredibly stupid 12 year old who rushes headfirst into every adventure unless he stops to think and then becomes immediately afraid. <laughs> well that's really interesting so what, what about kind of like um, the stories behind it like in in all these different comics um, what are there personal stories that you guys draw towards? Um, well I think the most personal is probably our third issue which is a loving tribute to KFC which is my favorite food. Okay. Um, I, I really, uh, I, I like stories that are really stupid, like really big, ridiculous concepts, and then you just make it about the people, and you make it about real human emotion, and you get something really great. Uh, I think all of the best things, you know, The Simpsons, Gravity Falls, Bubba Hotep, they, they, they get that right, and I think we've found a good balance with this. Um, so it's, it's more that, you know, I, I like the idea of being friends with grumpy old people, so, and I like the idea of having impossible adventures what about you? Well, for me, uh, the thing I love most about Blastosaurus, besides it being just flat out silly, um, the humor is, is definitely from our sick imaginations, but it's about caring. It's about, uh, I'm, I'm a father of two, uh, two daughters. And um, for me, family is everything. We've created a family. Just one of the characters happens to be a six foot tall mutant triceratops. And he's more of, either an uncle or a grandfather, and there's love and caring. Um, 
through all the, and they rescue each other. They, they, it's never one person who solves the, the mystery or takes care of everyone else. It's a, a family sort of uh, event. Very interesting. And what do you guys kind of see towards like the next wave or the next, you know, the next thing for this? Well, uh, we've got a uh, we've got a, a new issue coming out for Free Comic Book Day on May fourth. So okay. every comic store in the world should have that. There's fifty thousand of them going out, um, and that's a really great one. It has three short stories. It's it's actually the one year anniversary of the first Blasto story coming out in the U.S. So um, it's Blasto's one year anniversary, and everyone's getting together and telling stories. So we have a vampire story. We have a story about about a, about a uh, potato that's gone bad, but like really bad. <laughs> And we have uh, my new favorite villain, the Crop Duster, who is uh, an evil guy who flies around in a fart-powered hovercraft. These are so creative. <laughs> Thank you. And then we have a summer special about cereal mascots and a Halloween story coming out later as well. A lot of things coming up in the pipeline, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you guys so much. It's so exciting to hear how all of this comes together and your inspiration and, and the meaning behind that. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. This is Katrina again with IDA TV here at WonderCon. Thanks, guys.